Alright guys, Touch Crow back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Potentially big news for the CDL on the positive end coming out last night. Kenny talking about the fact that Los Angeles Thieves, they're going to be playing out of Los Angeles from the cash out compounds. Likely because they believe there's a very reasonable chance indeed the entire season will be played on land. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you were new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really up to the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, this from Illy, 20 years old. So happy birthday to Illy for yesterday. Yesterday, and as Rambo says in reply, happy birthday, broski. Looking forward to making this year a great one with you. Thanks, brother. It is going to be a good season, Goge. There were some other tweets that came up between Illy and Shotzi with kind of like the egg time of the hourglass. Sorry, guys. The um, the emoji that comes out as well. And uh, I mean, yeah, like they seem to be having a pretty good time with it. And yes, pretty evident, right, that Rambo and Illy are going to be staying together in some form or another. Where's it going to be? We imagine it's going to be up to Dallas. As we looked at yesterday, Shotzi getting kind of frustrated. It has taken so long, but probably not too far around the corner now. This I thought was actually kind of funny as well from Crimsex. At least um, it was funny what people were reading into. They were looking at the, the colours here, like the fact that um, these colours, to be fair, are pretty much bang on to what the Paris Legion logo colours are, right? You've got this kind of orange, you've got this kind of darker red type thing going on. So people were saying, okay, Crimsex is a Paris Legion, is it possible? But um, it was kind of funny yesterday what was going on with Paris, because uh, they were getting pretty much clowned on the timeline, and then they actually come back to life. But um, Mutineers tweet this out, yo at Paris Legion, are you even alive? And as you can see right here, their most recent tweet was on September the 6th, over a month ago, they've just been radio silent on the timeline, just um, having a good time, enjoying their off-season, I suppose, which um, not many other organisations tend to do this type of stuff. It's like, um, you can look at Paris from a number of different angles and just say, like, you know, how much does the management really care about this stuff? But to be fair, after getting called out, they did come back to life kind of briefly. Whether they'll go back to a slumber again, I suppose we'll see. But they then tweet this out, you know, Paris Legion off-season Vanguard release, start of CDL 2022, okay, and maybe they're going to be back in business then. And as LIG say, it's, um, it's cool to see like because a lot of these organizations last year they go into a bit of back and forth on the timeline New York was very good at it London was very good at it Florida Mutineers were very good at it they were probably the main culprits some organizations kind of um, take a more laid-back approach they don't really call anyone out or anything but um, it's generally a good time when they do Minnesota Rocker for example the tweet where like, they're witnessing a breakdown right that tweet is pretty legendary at this point but anyway LAG seem to also be getting in on the act they say good morning Sancho what year is it not yours say LAG in the replies so, like yeah totally pretty entertaining I think there's a reply here actually from Paris Lee Legion. Nice to know we have things in common, which I thought was kind of a funny reply from Paris because they're basically admitting, yeah, our team's going to suck, right? Like, yeah, okay, we have things in common. Your team's also going to suck, but we're also going to be awful at the game as well. And as some like this tweet out, you know, LAG trash talk. It's showtime, baby. We're going to be back in business. So definitely exciting. LAG taking step up all across the park, which we do love to see. This also I thought was funny. What's off season without a Paris Legion password debacle? Saying that effectively they just forgot their password. That's why they haven't been a tweeting for the last month or so. But um, this also from Crone, you forget the password for this too. This is what we discussed maybe, a, I don't know, a month and a bit, a couple of months ago now. The fact that the Paris Legion trademark was considered dead. So it was like, okay, Paris are going to sell their team. Like, um, it's, well, it seems pretty obvious by this, but when it was leaked a couple of months ago. But uh, apparently, maybe they just forgot the password. I don't really know. And uh, Paris Legion is still continuing onwards. But um, it still seems like it's uh, like a dead trademark. But yet, uh, for whatever reason, Paris is still charging on and uh, still going for another year, I suppose, of this team before maybe they're going to sell their spot then. I don't really know. But um, it's just a difficult organisation to get behind right now. But to be fair to the social media guys, they did a pretty funny job on the timeline yesterday. This also from E United, right? Because a lot of organisations would love to have Paris's spot, right? They'd love to come into the CDL and make this happen and build a good roster and actually spend some money doing so that Paris don't seem to be willing to do. E United, the World Championship winning team in 2019, they've been wanting to get in. That's a nice slot you have there. Paris went like, you know, peace out, I'm straight out of here. And um, to be fair, they never even really showed up to begin with. So yeah, definitely catching some, well, not even straight, People say catching strays, but strays is like kind of an unintended, but like um, it wasn't necessarily intended that they got beefed on, but they kind of did. Whereas this is just, uh, well, straight at the neck, to be honest, going straight for the juggler, E United and some of these other organizations. Let's talk about this then, right? So yesterday we did the episode 39 of the Breaking Boy podcast, live with Kenny on Twitch. It was a really great time. Pretty sure we broke our highest ever um, live view count on the episode. We talked about an awful lot. It'll be up on YouTube by the time this video goes live, I do believe. But uh, one of the very interesting clips that came out as a result of it was talking about... Um, 
football. There was a question in the chat we'll have a look at here in a second about the possibility of Los Angeles playing out of LA. Because if we saw Los Angeles Grillers, we talked to them on the podcast like two or so weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and they said they're working on getting a house out in Texas to the, so they can compete from out there with them, um, you know, with the rest of the organizations that generally are now based in Texas because the practice is way better. But also for the online league that we had last year, it makes way more sense to be in that kind of Dallas, Texas vicinity where you're much closer to other teams, you're much closer to where the majority of the servers are going to be for the matches. Now, at some teams, for example, Los Angeles Grillers last year were based out of LA and they had a really hard time with the servers, not necessarily so much last year because they kind of improved the server locations, but the year before, certainly in Modern Warfare, when it went to online halfway through the season, the way the servers were set up in the CDL just meant that it was kind of screwing over teams that were based in California. Now, um, the interesting thing is LA Thieves are actually going to be moving out there and Kenny kind of implies that this decision may have been made in part by the very likely possibility that well this season could be entirely on land. A couple of questions in the chat here. Firstly, this one from um, I guess C Bamin. Question about like the Cash App compound. I mean, my guess would be you guys are gonna stay in Texas and compete from there. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I guess you never know. LA no, Rulers last year they, they were over in LA. We're mo so it's. I mean, I I don't know if I can say it, but I guess I can. I mean, we're all moving to LA. We'll be playing from the Cash App compound. So that's the plan, is, is that the plan for now. The plan for now. And oh, what's yeah, up? I was just gonna ask: Is that in hopes of um the la uh, yeah. league being on land? Yeah, and like depending on what the verdict is for land or not, um, I think we'll be living in LA regardless. But if it's not land, then we'll like have like ha here we had like a little house we had. We just played out of the house. Like we'll just get a house. I mean, think. LAT is going to get a house first and then have us play out of it here, like fly here on game day weekends and then play out of it if it is like online matches. But I think we're moving to LA regardless. Well, we are moving to LA regardless. Yeah, you have a place <laughs> That's actually awesome to, hear. to be able to play matches from as well. So depending on what the verdict is for like the league, uh, I think that's like the, that's like what we were told, like the route they want to take is that we're moving to LA, plan out of the compound of his land, if it's online. We'll still be living in LA, but they'll just get us somewhere to play in Dallas for um, our matches. Yeah. Um, Will you guys you... be practicing? Oops, sorry, you can go away. Will you guys be practicing like in the same facility every day, or are you guys gonna be practicing from home? Uh, so our plan right now is to practice from the compound. Um, so I think they're changing the Fortnite room, I think, to the COD room hey. or something. But um, yeah, that's, I, good. that's our plan for now. So we'll see how that goes. Sounds very optimistic to me, I must say. The <laughs> team's like, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna move to LA. We're just gonna move to LA because um, it's it might be land. We're not really sure, but it seems like yeah. a good idea. Okay. So that is exciting. Um, so Kenny goes on to clarify on the Reddit and say, we actually have no idea. Los Angeles Thieves just wants us playing out of the compound and also just wants us around Hunter of Thieves, Los Angeles Thieves staff and management as much as possible, adapting to whatever situation the league gives us, which definitely makes sense, right? Because of course, you've got Jacob, you've got um, you know, Nature, for example, out there in LA. So it kind of makes sense why they'd also be based out there as well. But uh, if they kind of knew for a fact that it was going to be um, it was going to be online, then they probably would do what they did this past season, right? Where, where it was online and actually have a play in in Texas where they're going to play from. Now, of course, if things are online or whatever the case may be, they're still going to be potentially flying out there to Dallas to play in some sort of place for the uh, for these online matches. But um, I mean, still, they're going to be based and living the majority of the season in Los Angeles, which certainly I think sounds like good news to me. The word I used in the video was optimistic, but what I should really have said was it sounds like uh, you guys are pretty confident, or at least uh, the management is pretty confident that this is going to be like even Kenny says no idea. Like um, you know, I would say that there's probably some idea from the from the, the management over there that. Um, well, it's going to be LAN or at least a majority LAN or whatever the case may be if, if they were to base them out there. Of course, um, there could be other reasons. They want to do great content and stuff like this that Kenny was also talking about in the episode that I'll leave linked for you guys down below. But to me, it definitely sounds like pretty good news that Los Angeles Thieves are relatively confident the entire season is going to be done on LAN to the point that they can just uh, live it out in LA and then when they have to play their matches for the, uh, whatever it's going to be, like regular tournaments or online uh, on, you know, regular stage matches that are on LAN, then they can just fly out to Texas or wherever the LAN is going to be held 
Charles and then fly back to LA rather than have to worry about playing from there. They also did say that he's going to be practicing from that for this facility, which might not give the best practice. So definitely could be something of a disadvantage that to be fair, a lot of people talked about last year with Los Angeles Grillers and even, um, you know, Slasher, for example, on Los Angeles, on Optigame in Los Angeles before that, when he was out in California having a difficult time, even formal during that Modern Warfare season as well, was him having a tough time with the internet. So could be a potential issue, but um, I suppose we'll have to see how things develop. Certainly seems like good news, at least on paper, that Los Angeles thieves are willing to do this and the possibilities that that might entail. This also from the Call of Duty League, I was hoping they wouldn't delete this and they would kind of just stand by, but unfortunately they did. So we don't have the entirety of it. This is what they initially tweeted out. CDL Trivia, which CDL Pro has the highest S&D kill streak of the season. Now, Round 11 stats immediately responded with, it was just TJ, right? He went 12 and 0 in like stage 1 or something on Moscow. It was stage 1, stage 2, probably stage 1. And um, anyway, they come out and do the thing. They, they're pretty sure they said it was either Abizi, Clayster, or Insight, and they did kind of a graphic. And then like, a couple of hours later, they come out with a reply and say, yeah, it was Insight. He had an 11 kill streak. But um, what was kind of strange was that they said, yeah, he had an 11 kill streak. Congratulations, Insight, for your like rookie debut. But um, they said he was also tied with two other players, one of which being Alex, also at 11, and one of which being TJ at 11. But then TJ's like, I went 12 and 0, what do you even mean? So I don't really know why the CDL, first of all, even if they thought it was a tie between three away, why would they just give it to Insight rather than giving it to TJ or Alex? Two players, I guess like two players that might not be in the league going into this new season. But um, still, if three players tied, why would you not make a graphic of all the three players? And then they even got it wrong, right? And TJ actually did go 12 and 0 and had a, a 12 kill streak, which uh, most people recognised immediately. But um, the CDL clearly didn't. And then it's had to delete the tweet subsequently. So kind of uh, funny stuff really here from the CDL. This also from Breaking Point. So as things are going to develop over the coming days, I didn't vote in this, so I don't have um, I don't have any well decision making on how this list goes. I think uh, this list is well, it's going to be very controversial. Let's just say these are the top twenty Challenger Cold War players. Now um, it's so difficult to do because of the different regions. But uh, anyway, Parasite at nineteen. I think um, well, I'm pretty sure I saw this and I was like, okay, Parasite's maybe not going to be too happy with being put at nineteenth right here, given um, well, a pretty solid player I thought in Challengers this year. But there's always some drama about this. To be honest, Parasite says average is seven point five on pickup teams. I love me. He says the video is great that I held shift put together right here. We'll have to see how this goes over the coming days. And after this concludes, then it's going to be the top 20 CDL pros of the Cold War season. That's certainly going to be pretty exciting. Talking of challenges, this also from Zed. Vanguard is just around the corner. Excited to dip my toes into some coaching this year. So hopefully Zed can get an offer somewhere. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see what team potentially wants to give him a go. If um, if in the CDL side of things, there's not too many teams still up for grabs. But London, for example, could be a decent option. But um, also maybe in the challenger side and then make it through from there. Like guys like Phoenix and Dureal have clearly done over the last couple of years on that side of things. And also just this to finish things off. Eight years ago today, that being yesterday, Nature started shooting the Optic Van as a Unite Drobata Cav. The rest is history. Nature explained this recently that despite the fact that Big Timer got the kill here for the Optic Van exploding, it was actually Nature coming down the street next to Green that was shooting the van and um, not only got the two piece with the van blob, but also got the final kill with the pistol and helped clinch this legendary map against Unite. But very much intrigued your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. I'm really upside the YouTube bar and I know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. To happen, Revan, is Killa gonna get this one in? There's two players to beat from Optic. Big timer on top street will get picked all up to Scumpy. Killa with protection. Scumpy shot go. going down. Seven oh, seconds. Look at that. Karma. Big the Karma for Big T. Nate shot is there. They Nate got shot is there. They got the return.